Hi, Ooh, get this right. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a quick live just to let you know what's happening next week. So tomorrow morning and Sunday morning, nine o'clock, we'll be doing uh, kind of arts and crafts. Arts and crafts with the objective of creating resources that we'll be using in the next week's um, lives. So it's all about number sense. Now number sense is about getting a feel and understanding for numbers. And a lot of us, especially as grown-ups, never really got number sense when we were at school because it just didn't teach maths in that way. And so it's we might find it hard to facilitate that now and because in schools they have their set curriculum and they have the things they've got to get done in a certain time at a certain pace a child that falls behind and doesn't grasp a concept it's possible they never grasp it unless you take time out, get a tutor and take time out, or, or if you learn the skills yourself to actually have those conversations with them. So we're going to take advantage of this time that we've got with our children to help them get grounded on that. And this doesn't only apply to young learners, four, five, six year olds. I have encountered 10, 11 year olds that don't have a solid number sense. In fact, just look right here. This one here still doesn't know her times table. So I'm actually, this is going to progress from basic number sense. It's going to progress to times tables of arithmetic and move on from there. So it'll go up and down to, and the idea is that I'm looking for activities. I'm looking to present activities that they call them uh, low threshold, high ceiling. So learners that, either a young or have a low attainment level can enjoy the activity and be stretched. It's, the idea is to be stretched a little bit beyond your current ability. So your attainment, no, be, sorry, get correction, beyond your current attainment. So be stretched just a little bit. So wherever you are on, on the learning spectrum, you're going to be stretched out of that. Now, because these are low threshold, high ceiling, that also means that the older, more experienced learners, higher attainers, high, people who have reached a higher attainment level will also be stretched. And one of the ways they can be stretched is by facilitating the younger learners. So we're going to use the see one, do one, teach one principle. And in the, and they themselves will, you can use that. So it'll be see one, do one, teach one when they do some teaching so they can show it then they can show it, then in their teaching process, they can show it, they can allow, facilitate their younger sibling or lower attaining sibling to do it. And that means not being a doofer, it means the learner, the one that they're teaching is doing, not the older sibling or the higher attainer sibling. You don't do it for them. You take away their power if you do it for them. You give them power if you allow them to play with it. And you know what? Them playing with it might not look the same as it would when you're playing with it. Doesn't mean it's wrong. It means they're learning in their own way and they're learning at their own pace and in their own style. So that's powerful. So we're going to do that next week. And to, to start off with on Monday morning, well, actually, if you join us for the lives tomorrow and on Sunday morning, and we'll do some in the evenings as well. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create the resources for next week. So we're going to create paper versions of tokens. So I've actually got this very colourful bowl with dice and tokens. We're going to use all of these. But we have to bear in mind, well, I work um, in, con I work alongside isn't the right word. I, I support an organisation in Africa that trains teachers um, they give them, provide them with professional development, they get funding for them and get really high quality professional development for teachers in rural areas, in, um, in disadvantaged areas. And those people might not be able to get their hands on these lovely, colorful 
beautiful thing. So we're also going to be creating um, a, a, a kind of a spinning top that has six, so it'll be hexagonal. So it has, you can just spin it, you can make it yourself with a toothpick. You better spin it. I'm simulating the action here instead of rolling a dice. But what we want, what we're going to be creating is basically we're going to take numbers up to 100. So ideally, we'll also have in some way 10 containers. I found a load of rankings here. I've got loads of them and more. And more. I've got loads of them. And so the idea is we'll be splitting up, getting some number sense. We'll be working on the lower numbers, but we'll also be making up groups of 10. So you want to either make or find, that doesn't, that's got more than 10, but anyway, you get the idea. So we want containers, you can make them. Maybe we'll find a way of, of doing the uh, uh, little box out of origami and maybe we'll do that as well. So we want those, we want those, we want some paper. This can be scrap paper, can be old newspaper, it can be, any kind of paper will need a ruler, a pencil, and I didn't bring them out, colouring pens to make some nice colour, make it colourful, colouring pens. So there, actually, we'll get, I'll be right back. Be right back. Did a big tidy up last night and I've lost a bunch of things. So I've lost my actual colouring pencils. There's a few things I've lost track of. So colouring. Paper, ruler, pencil, colouring, some kind of a bowl with lots of things in it. This has got over a hundred items in it. You can make you can make it a tray. Get a tray. You can identify a tray or a, or a bucket or a um, something with over a hundred things in it, and then smaller containers that you can put ten in, up to ten in at each go. So that's, um, we're going to be creating little tokens. So that's ha, ah, that's super rough way of doing it. We're going to do it much better over the weekend. We're going to create little tokens that represent the 10 in your, in your little container as well. So we're going to find ways to represent numbers so that we grow, go from having 100 items to representing 100 items with the number 100. So that's so please do join and if you don't want to spend the weekend preparing that's all right we'll repeat the instructions on the monday it'll all be saved you'll be able to see them on the on the, the replay and um i just forgot to check to see if anyone's come and joined us tonight it is a short live let's have a look see if anyone actually joined us sometimes we get lots of people and sometimes friday night wouldn't blame you if you're not here oh here we go and don't see sight the sound of anyone and that's absolutely fine oh oh nice one lenny's put in a oh must like that one beautiful lenny's put in lenny was with us the first week he's put in a video of, of how to make an equilateral triangle by folding paper so that's on there too. Right. Um, yep. No, nope, nobody there. So I'll see you over the weekend. It's all saved. So it'll slowly but surely wins the race. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much.